Welcome to part two of the Dead to Show with Abdullah Al-Askari. In this episode, we're gonna talk about business entrepreneurship and he's gonna share some tips and tactics for entrepreneurs who want to start a business. So let us know in the comments whether you like this format or not, these short episode formats, and please hit the subscribe button. Thank you so much for all the love and support. Take care and enjoy the show. Welcome to the Dead to Show, a place to sit back, relax, and enjoy a good conversation. All right, so since you started businesses and here in Kuwait, there are a bunch of businesses that are maybe opening every other day here in Kuwait in Qatar Humani. So how do you, first of all, market your business? And I don't think marketing your business is the big issue here. I think it's it's the lifetime value and retaining these customers that come inside yeah, the door. Man. In Kuwait, I always tell every person I meet, uh, sustainability is really hard because um, the Kuwaiti customer has minimal loyalty to your brand. Um, it's all about the trend. What's trendy right now? Um, I'll follow the leader when it comes to trends, whether it's what gym everyone is working out in, what everybody is wearing, um, you know, where everyone is eating, what coffee everyone is drinking, all that stuff. So it's very, very, very difficult. You can bring in the customer. That's the easy part. Sustaining the customer is the most difficult. And I think I tell my team this all the time. When your service is on point, that's when your customer stays. When you have a dip in your service, they leave before you know it. Yeah, man. <sighs> so we try to keep our services at a really, really high level. Uh, anyone, anyone on my team will tell you that I'm very demanding when it comes to uh, customer service, the way we train, the way we uh, deal with the people on a day-to-day, -day. Um, everything from reception to gym to uh, locker room service, cleanliness, hygiene, Smell, everything has to be light, on point. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I've... I have friends that go to certain, and I think there are a bunch of different types of gyms here in Kuwait. For right? sure. So there are gyms that are family oriented where they're not necessarily like gym freaks or bodybuilders. And there are gyms that are just primarily only for bodybuilders. And you for see sure. them, they're like communities. They're like the iPhones versus Android when they're talking Absolutely. against each other. They're like teams and communities, correct? Yeah, for sure, yeah. yeah man. It's so, a huge community, yes. Right? Absolutely. And how are you able to <clears throat> create this community in a, such a noisy environment? I think you um, differ always differentiate yourself. The, the fitness industry is, is really wide. Um, again, I don't have to be a bodybuilding facility like every other. I can differentiate myself with the type of people that I hire, uh, the personnel that we have on board, um, the services, the packages. You. Uh, it doesn't mean that you don't look at your competition. You always have an eye on your competition. But that also doesn't mean that I have to copy everything that they do, even if they're successful at it. You might be successful at something, but if I try to do it, I'm going to completely fail. I look at my strong points and elevate those first and then bring up the weaker points, you know, step by step. Wow. So I think differentiating yourself from every other person, like all our supplement business, everybody sells protein powder. Uh, we don't. Ooh. We don't import. No protein powders, no pills, no. We're a snack based company strictly. Interesting. Everything is snack based. Okay. Um, so you have to find your niche, where you stand out, what you specialize in, and, and elevate that bright uh put a bright light on that and and people will come to you um another thing about if we can go back to sustainability we found in the past let's say eight to ten years that when the owner of the business is present this is especially in kuwait i don't know about other countries it's it's going to apply as well when you are present at all times and people can come to you whether it's staff, members, anyone else, you're, bus you're able to sustain your business. A lot of entrepreneurs here 
will be present for the first year. And once that ball is rolling, everything is on autopilot, they're like, you know what? I don't need to go there anymore. I have nothing, nothing to do. You're wrong. You need to be there. You need to be there all the time for this thing to work. And this is my advice to young upcoming entrepreneurs. If you're passionate about something and you open it up and start running it, you need to be there till the end. Till the end. Till the end. Yeah. <laughs> I like that. You have to be there. <laughs> Through good and bad, you're there. Yeah, you have to be there. Nice. Yeah. I like that. And um, what exactly, because I heard you mentioning something in the podcast that you guys basically save gyms. We try. Uh, after years of experience, um, we also have a sports and fitness consultancy. That's a, that's a genius idea. Yeah. So idea. we, people approach us. Um, a lot of this has happened in the past few years like we said um, people that have you know the extra cash but not the expertise or the expertise but you know not the day-to-day -day operation or the know-how um, places that are not really suffering but are having a hard time will go into this business and will evaluate it from A to Z and will pinpoint where you're lacking, whether it's uh, uh, hiring personnel or services or your packages maybe, or your marketing, whatever it may be. And we'll fix it for you and we'll hand it back to you. So we'll sign contracts maybe six months to one year. Um, and we'll leave, we'll hand over a blueprint or a manual and we'll hand it back to you. And sometimes, do you sometimes tell businesses or people that you're going to have to just shoot the cow? Uh, very rarely so. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I try not to, but maybe once. We've done it once. Wow. That, you know, we, we advise either to shut it down completely or switch it to something else. Change the business model? Change it, yeah. Just change it. It's, there's no shame in that. Mm. And... What I was, what I've been noticing here, because the mastermind that I was in, there were only fitness-related dudes. So there were like about seventy of them, successful six, seven-figure entrepreneurs, direct response marketers, all fitness-related. Wow. So, yeah, man. That's amazing. Yeah, man. Ugh, I want to attend that. Bro, I was the dumbest <clears throat> person for three days straight. I really want to attend that. <laughs> I'll, I'll connect you with the coach. He's amazing, Vince Del Monte. Nice. So basically. What I realized is that the marketing that not just gyms, people and startups and companies here in Kuwait are doing, they're not tapping into the jab, 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 right hook kind of style. Yeah. They're not tapping into the value based marketing, you know, they're the, looking the for the knockout. Yeah. They're selling straight away, you know, yeah. the content based marketing, you know. Yeah. So we live in an age where we can create shareable content, right? Like you can see a video and you can share it with your friend, you can share it with your spouse, whoever, if yes. you see that they they can get something out of it. Sure. So I think that side of marketing is still not even close to any, the people didn't even tap into that market here. In I see that, I see that. You know, like I think <coughs> since personal brands are rising here in Kuwait, some of the most successful businesses in Kuwait, like for example, let's take Esnantawar. Sure. Most of the that's a great example. Yeah, by the way, yeah. most of the dentists or the doctors in Aslan Towers have successful personal brands. Yeah, absolutely, means yes. they're adding value. Yeah, they're sharing content, which eventually, inevitably, will help what the business. Yeah. So I think that. Do you think that businesses here utilize the fact that they're going to have to invest in their personal brands and their team? They really should, honestly, because. Um, we do this, I do this with my team as well. Today, if you sign uh, a contract to come and work at C-Club as a trainer, uh, part of your clause is promoting your own self. No way. Yes, you have to do it. Wow. It's in your contract, yes. So you That's have to amazing. promote yourself as a trainer. I want you to post not all your workouts, your nutrition, some of your classes, your clients, if they allow you to, with permission, of course, because this is who the people look at. Wow. They're not looking at me. You know, I'm not, I'm not on the floor training. 
The people are looking at you. You're the head trainer. You're the PT expert. You're the kickboxing coach. You know, you're the hit guy. This is who people are looking at. Show them your expertise. I can film the gym all I want. But at at the end of the day, it's an empty gym. And I tell this to people that approach me all the time that want to build gyms. Gyms are the same all over the world. Mm -hmm. It's the same equipment. It's your same reception. Mm -hmm. It's, you know, it's not rocket science. Gyms are the same. It's the people that make the difference. Wow. And these guys, look at Equinox, for example. Mm. Uh, Equinox is a personal training uh, facility, very famous, Chicago, LA, New York City, uh, Miami as well. And uh, they invest in their people because this is what makes Equinox so special. And uh, and we've done this, you know, uh, when we hire guys, it doesn't matter how, how good of a trainer you are. We encourage you to go on uh, training courses. We encourage you to continue your education. The company will pay for it in full, you know, and we've had a lot of our staff, you know, uh, go on, move on to get master degrees, uh, uh, continue their university, um, get multiple certificates throughout the year. And uh, uh, this is what you need. A lot of business owners fear their staff. I mean, Richard Branson said this. Yes. He said, like, hire employees that others would want them so bad, but at the same time, your employees don't want to leave your company. Exactly. Um, but I you agree. Think business owners here are afraid of investing. Business in owners are afraid of uh, their staff rising up and sitting in their own seats. Ooh, yeah. This is one. Yeah. Uh, and moving on uh, to other companies. Mm. Uh, in both cases, it's fine with me. I always tell them, be my guest. You want to be in my shoes for 24 hours? <laughs> be my guest. You're gonna try. I dare you. You know? Um, I like that. Yeah. And uh, if you want to move on to, uh, to another business, I respect that. You know, you gave me your, your full attention for whatever, how many years that we've worked together. You, uh, full effort. You know, we give you all the credit. We appreciate it. Blah, blah, blah. Let me know if I can make your situation better here or if you think it's time for you to move on, I'll support you to move on. There's no shame in it. I mean, people move on every day. Um, When you're sought after by other gyms, that means I I did a great job with you. You know, it gives me credit as well. So um, it, it works both ways. Man, you seem like a very organized dude, mashallah. Like, I, I try to be. I really try man, to be. he wasn't late for this interview. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, I'm on my way, but I'm not going to be late. Yeah. I was like, all right, man, I got you. Take your time. I, don't... I, think, I think the only way to be, for me, this is personal, uh, to be truly organized um, is this 5 a.m. workout. If this is what yeah. jump starts my day. And when I get that out of the way, I feel I can schedule everything after and it gives me time to, um, uh, you know, like recharge and refocus and not recharge, just jumpstart my day, basically. Uh, and I think it's time for you to just think about certain things in your life. And you know, to yeah. me, the gym is a, it's my sanctuary. Like, I don't even want to talk to people at the gym. Yeah, know? I'm the same. Yeah, that's just... why I choose 5 a.m. because I'm the only one there. <laughs> Since you're yeah. the owner, everybody's going to talk yeah. to you while they're there. <laughs> Good yeah. point. Yeah, it's like somewhat of a meditation. It is. So for you sure. think time management is a very important. It's key. As I mean, yeah. My mentor always, uh, she's always told me, mm. if you manage your time, you can achieve everything you want during that day. Uh, just make sure that everything is scheduled in, and you're, uh, you're, you're aware of it, basically. Exactly. Yeah. So, what are things that are gyms doing wrong here? Oh man, you're gonna get me into a lot of trouble. <laughs> um, I think a lot of gym owners are starting up these businesses, and they nothing—they know nothing about the fitness industry, about training people, about basic workouts, for example. Um, there's, you know, there's nothing wrong with opening your own business. 
but hire the right people to run it for you if, if you're not capable of doing that. A lot of business owners will be like, no, uh, I know how to run it. I'm capable, I'm aware. Uh, let alone their, you know, their background has nothing to do with the industry. Mm. You're a financial guy, fine. Partner up with someone that knows uh, about the industry or hire somebody, hire a CEO, you know. Um, specialization, I think, is lacking. What about, I mean, gyms are not cheap to start and run here in Kuwait. They're right? not, no. no. Uh, rent is high. It doesn't matter which area you're in, whether you're in Kuwait City or any other area. Uh, rent is really high in Kuwait. Uh, equipment is expensive because everything is shipped from abroad. Uh, personnel is expensive because if you're hiring, you know, highly qualified trainers, they're not cheap to hire. They're very demanding. Uh, they demand certain benefits, commission, you know, so it's not it's not cheap. Yeah. And just because gyms are running for a year or two, that doesn't mean that they're successful or no. profitable, correct? No. You're rarely br- breaking even after two years. Wow. Yeah. And what's the lifetime value supposedly in a good scenario for somebody who joins a gym a client here in kuwait two years max two years no max. matter what service you get yeah two years That's max the average, yeah. as average and then you uh, either uh, readjust their packages mm-hmm. or you know give a special service or you know you have to offer them something in return for them to stay and the value, I mean, as a member, what value do I get? Like, I realize that, okay, sharing your workout, sharing your meals, but value, like talking to the camera, yes, talking to them. How important do you think that is for members? Because I think that will definitely differentiate gyms from others. For sure. You know? And um, we've proven that we've proved this uh, with C Club. Um, as a team, we've taken it upon ourselves to change people's lifestyles. Wow. This is the value that we want when the customer walks into the door. Um, you know, the gym was basically a social club where people hung out, uh, you know, chilled, whatever, did a 20 minute cardio session and that they called it a day. But uh, when I took over with my team, we changed the culture completely. People come in to train now, and they are serious about their training. And we manage their times, their schedules. We've, we re-manage their whole lives, basically. Wow. Where training has become some sort of an addiction to them. Hmm. They're like, you know what, you, you guys have changed the way I think, I approach my day, um, you know, uh, my, my energy at work is different, my levels are different. And this is what we we want to achieve by the end of the day. Um, I always tell my guys, I'm like, look, when you're passionate about something and you truly want to change this person's life, all the rewards will come in return. Hmm. You don't have to worry about making money the minute you join. It will come. It's a byproduct. Yeah, Yeah, just be passionate about what you do. The money will come. But don't you think that this being passionate... um concept well idea puts a lot of pressure on people who didn't find their passion like people be like i had still don't know what my passion is that's that's true and i'm supposed to yeah it is it it puts pressure but it also um allows you to think about it Mm -hmm. Uh, you you really want to discover yourself um i think i found myself in that college gym when i was a student and I knew this is what I wanted to do. I mean, I was always passionate about sports. You know, I, I've done it my whole life. But I think that college gym really changed my life. Eight years PT is a long time. Well, Eight like years PT you. and I've been training since, what, 94? Oh, Haven't man. missed a workout since 1994. No. Yes, man. Yes, sir. <laughs> now that's something that needs to be mentioned. Wow. Yeah. That's amazing, man. Oh, yeah. That's amazing. What's your next business venture? Uh, I'm working on it right now, actually. Um, I always feel that, you know, as 
uh, adults, as uh, people that are educated and, you know, we got a fair chance in life to build careers and uh, become the people that we are today. Uh, you need to give back. You need to give back to the youth. And uh, one of the projects that I'm working on right now is a sports academy for youth in Sabah Salim. Um, the purpose of this academy is to um, allow kids to have professional dreams when it comes to sports. I think all of us growing up dreamed about becoming a pro athlete, mm -hmm. somehow, somewhere, some sport, you know, but um, nobody gave us the chance. There were no facilities. There was no guidance. Uh, when I look at kids that grew up overseas, it's, it starts from a really young age. You know, they're, they're support, there's a support system at home. There's a support system at school. Your coach is with you day and night, you know, and it's, it's built. It's built in you, brick by brick. They, they install it in you. Uh, here, it's, it's, uh, it's all on you. And sometimes, like myself, I didn't have the right guidance to become a professional athlete. And this academy will give uh, kids the guidance to become future uh, pros or at least give them a chance to. Um, there will be an education center that's connected to this uh, academy. So you're not, you're not allowed to do participate in any sport until your homework is done after school. So you, you sit down in the library, it's, it's monitor, monitored by uh, teachers, you know, whatever subject you're studying today, you finish your homework and then you, you, you go practice with your team. That's amazing. Man. Yeah. That's amazing, Saraha. Off to the last segment, the question segment. So I'm going to ask you a bunch of questions, man. Go ahead. What is it like a one word answer or you just no, want an no, answer? Open ended okay. questions, open ended. <laughs> All right, let's get started. So, what's your biggest accomplishment, Abdullah? Wow, man. You know what's so funny? I knew you were going to ask me this question because this morning, while I, while I was in the gym, I'm like, I bet you he's going to ask no, me. No hey. Yes. And I thought about this real hard. Yeah. Um, I don't think there is one. Speaking for myself, maybe it applies to others, I'm not sure. There is really not one big accomplishment. Mm -hmm. I think you have big accomplishments over certain phases in your life, right? So um, when I got my master's, I'm like, wow, this is my biggest achievement. And then when I had kids, I'm like, damn, <laughs> that's my biggest achievement in life. Yeah. And when I started, you know, one, two, three, four businesses, I'm like, I think it's the, the phase you're going through and what you're working for. And everything you accomplish, there's another goal that you have to set or you can't be just satisfied. All right, you know, I'm done. I've done everything. There's no such thing. Mm. Um, once that, you know, that's checked off your list, I'm like, okay, what's the next what's thing next? that I want to do? Probably. Yeah. And I think this is key to moving forward and your pa to continue burning the fire inside of you as you you cannot be satisfied stay home no yeah no matter what you accomplish you can't be satisfied ah uh, love it man love it when was the last time you did something that scared you and what was it i think it's every day man wow every day wow um just thinking about how many um, projects I'm, I'm responsible how many people I'm responsible for you know uh, my children looking up to me it's pretty scary mm. so uh, you have to uh, be on your on your game every single day man I love it man I absolutely, <laughs> well, I absolutely love it describe yourself in one word um Somebody gave me this, this uh, word in a previous interview, like three or four years ago, uh, fully dedicated. She, she said that about me. She's like, I've never seen someone so fully dedicated about everything that he does. 
and uh, I hashtag this on all my posts now, fully dedicated to everything. Wow. Yeah. I mean, I'm not the, I've just known you today, and the word that came to my mind is focused. Yeah, like I think. This dude, I feel like you're like a laser. When you have something you want to do, like no matter what happens, you're going to get I there. think I'm, I'm blessed with that, but I'll, I'll fall off the chart every now and then. Yeah. Every now and then, I think it's just human being a human. Yeah. Like, man, you know what? I'm, I'm really sick of all this. Hmm. Yeah. I don't want to do it anymore. Hmm. And then you look back and you're like, everything you've been through, all the hard work, all the accomplishments, everything that's going on right now, you're like, man, I can't give up now. There is no way I'm going to give up now, you know? It's, it's impossible. I yeah. love it, man. Yeah. What's the, what's, what's, what are some of the biggest mistakes you've made in business? Um, I think the first mistake that a lot of people will agree is going into partnership with friends. Nice. Yes. Nice. Okay. And that's something I will never do ever again. Wow. It's no longer there, but... Um, Partnering up with childhood friends is my biggest mistake. Wow. Yeah. Interesting. I mean, I can see, I can see why that could ruin a bunch of things, huh? Yeah. It it ru it ruined everything, and it almost uh, almost uh, ruined my career. But I I didn't allow it to. Wow. Yeah. That's a that's a huge. Lesson. And people warned me, uh, including my father. He's like, look think about it you know you don't you don't need to go into business with them and at that time i didn't need it i didn't need them financially mm. um i was like you know what we're we're passionate about this same thing uh let me bring them in let me give them a chance we'll grow together and we'll build you know something together it can grow into uh, multiple facilities multiple cafes multiple this and that i had a whole plan and for various reasons, uh, it didn't work. But um, uh, I'm, I'm glad it, it was resolved the way it was. Interesting. Yeah. That's an amazing lesson, man. Yeah. Um, last question. Sure. What advice would you want to give your children? Um, I think do what you love. Do what you love is the most important. And um, maybe discover discover what you want to do at a really young age. Wow. Yeah. Discover what you're passionate about and, and pursue it. Um, maybe because this is something that I couldn't do as a young age. I, I, you know, I was expected to do other things. And uh, I was expected to do what I did in the beginning of my career, graduate college, do corporate life, and, and that's it, right game there, over. Yeah, yeah. But um, I think somewhere down that line, I'm like, you know what? Uh, it's time. It's time to do something. And I would tell them this from the start. You know, if you find something that you love, pursue it. Wow. Yeah. That's amazing advice, man. Thank You're you, an amazing guy. Well, Allah, Allah, Habibi, man. thank you so much. Thank you so much for coming thank to you. the show, Sarah. Until man. Much <laughs> You're an amazing guy. Thank you for sharing I the stories. It. I really open. appreciate the time. I learned so much, Sarah. The one thing I learned is not to open a Jimmy Kuwait. That, <laughs> that <But> too. <laughs> yeah, that too. Thank you so much for coming and giving thank us you for your having time, me. Sarah. This is the camera, Abdullah. I want you to share if you have a message with the world, something to share with them. One minute, 30 seconds, up to you. Go for it. Um, like, like I said, like I mentioned to Aid throughout our conversation is uh, uh, do what you're passionate about, uh, pursue your passion, uh, figure out what you love and, and just go for it. I mean, life is too short uh, to do what others expect from you. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Uh, on that note, guys, take care. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you later. It's a lot to look this damn good Cause baby I feel real good And I wish I would It's gotta be against the law To look this damn good Everybody watch out 
Watch out now I'm ready for a good time And I came to groove The whole band's here and we came to move Got a fresh haircut and two new shoes We're here all night like we got nothing to lose I'm coming out the jacket cause we're turning up the heat I wanna see you clapping when you get up out your seat It's time to make it happen when we hit these streets I'm coming in hot and I can't be beat Watch out now Baby, watch out now Watch out Cause we're turning up the heat I wanna see you clapping when you get up out your seat It's time to make it happen when we hit these streets I'm coming in hot and I can't be beat Watch out now Everybody watch out Watch out Baby, I feel real good and I wish I would It's gotta be against the law Look this damn good, baby watch out now. Everybody watch out Watch out now Everybody watch out 